Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is Dr. Lior Nor El Bar El here again in this beautiful place. Uh, about to give you guys a little talk about the spiritual realms, about the whole spiritual things and spirits in general. Uh, why am I doing this? Uh, because I've received so many emails, so many uh, on my YouTube, so many on my Facebook. Uh, people that want to know about things. Uh, a lot of them, they suffer from, I mean, they don't suffer. They are clairvoyant as I am. I am clairvoyant. I'll give you a little bit of an intro about myself. Um, and they're hiding some of them. Some of them, you know, they don't know what to do. They're kind of lost. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, they don't know if it's a curse. They don't know if uh, Satan, you know, it did something to them. We're going to go into all of that right now. So first, I'd like to give you guys an intro. So a lot of you guys first, I'm just going to mention those of you that told me that you want to kill yourselves because you can't, you know, you're hearing voices. You want to kill yourself because of that. Do not kill yourself, please, okay? Because you have no idea how special you are, despite what anybody thinks. And I'm going to go into my intro here, and I hope that you guys can hear me. All right, those who are not clairvoyant, it's something that you guys need to listen, because you will not understand what it is to do great deeds in this world, okay? Until you understand what happens after you die. Okay, this is something very, very important. So whether you're clairvoyant or not is irrelevant in this point because I want you guys to understand that. But to those brothers and sisters of mine who are clairvoyant as I am or, you know, have some form of clairvoyance or whatever, I do not want you to feel lost as I have. Okay, I don't want you to feel um, like you're doing something bad because you're not. And I'm going to explain that. Okay, so now for the intro. Well, obviously, those who came across me know a lot of the times I do exorcisms in homes for people who believe in it, people who don't believe in it, and then believe in it once they see the truth. Uh, but it wasn't, I wasn't that fearless uh, when I was younger. When I, grew, when I was young, the first thing that happened, I'll never forget, my grandfather passed away and I felt horrible. Now, ever since I was a kid when I was a baby, I used to look at an empty side and always giggle and laugh and speak to the wall. Nobody knew what the hell. They thought I was blind. Uh, they, in, in fact, that's what they thought because they, they would go like this and I, my eye would just be like directed on somewhere and just talk to it. <laughs> so, uh, already that was a sign and my nephew, uh, is now experiencing these beautiful signs as well. Uh, may the Lord, oh man, I feel, thank, thank the Lord so much for this. A uh, little bit of me spilled on my nephew, uh, blood is blood, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know. I guess it is uh, hereditary. What am I going to say? I mean, my, my family, I come from a list of things like that. But anyways, I started off uh, when I knew what I was doing. After my grandfather passed away, uh, I was really, I, I didn't understand the concept between death and being, you know, like, uh, like, what is death? You know, obviously I was like, what, four years old, even less, probably like, yeah, three and a half, four years old. And I'll never forget, I was near uh, his tomb and I put... Uh, stone, you know, they told us to put stones there, you know, because that's how it is. You put uh, as many people as there are. And I remember I asked, I said, oh, God, please uh, make my grandfather come back alive. I already understood. I, I knew right there what what death was, I, I, but it just came to me as a shock. Because usually people, you know, they say, oh, grandpa went on vacation <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I got it pretty hard. And because uh, he was like, he was a fa like a father to me. <clears throat> so... I mean, I could still remember this. <clears throat> and uh, what happened was I was looking for answers in, in, in my head. Like as a little kid, you know, you're asking, oh, God, and this. And then I started crying. I said, what if my mom's going to die? What if my, you know, my brother's going to die? What if my, my uncles are going to die? My, you know, everybody, uh, how can I deal with this? I'm never going to see them again, blah, 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 whatever. Started having dreams, crazy dreams. And I started... At, in a very young age, as the years went by, it was like God was trying to tell me, you know, that there's a life after death. I mean, because I didn't understand that. So, you know, I started getting dreams on that, started feeling it. And then from the dreams, it started becoming, I'm a little fast forwarding it. It started to become more physical. And I used to just hear them like little whispers in my ear, like, you know, like that. And uh, afterwards, um, I started kind of seeing things but in my head like i would see an empty spot but somehow i would superimpose a person on there so as i was growing older you know still young and the age of eight ten you know whatever i started to see them as clear as day and 
I didn't tell anybody about this. So I would see, let's say, if you were walking down the street, you know, you'd be here, I see a spirit right here, and I would not be able to tell the difference what is real and what is not. It became, and, and spirits are an energy, so you have to understand, when they manifest, it's because they know you can, you are, a, a, you can, you can see them, so they want you to give information. I mean, think about it, when you're dead, right, what's the first thing you want to do? Communicate with the other side to tell them you're okay, right? I mean, you don't have a telephone, how are you going to do it? So, they, when they know you're, you have those senses, they start to manifest themselves, and they manifested, and you know, all kinds of people. I mean, you're talking about like so many people, and then you would see them side by side. Now, I learned of, you know, we didn't have internet back then. You know, I'm not that Stone Age. I'm, you know, but we didn't have like internet at the at those in the uh, 80s. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have it at least. I mean, I know that it wasn't out, but the thing is. I learned about what schizophrenia is, and I started to think I had schizophrenia, but I didn't want to come out and, and tell people because I thought I had some kind of mental disorder. I always was a child that kept things to myself, even at a very young age. I would not want to tell anybody about it. So I started thinking, maybe I'm seeing things. Okay. So then after the years went by, uh, I started getting, you know, I couldn't identify uh, with humanity. I, I, every time I would pull away from people, I would be like kind of antisocial if you you know if you think about it, uh, but it wasn't that way. Like I would still greet you with a smile. I would talk. I wouldn't be silent. You know, like most antisocial people are. I would talk to you. I'd be you know really a great friend to you, but at the same time, I want you to leave me the hell alone. That's how I was. It was like I just did not trust humanity at all. It just didn't. I didn't feel a connection. I, I never felt like I belonged in this world. It felt I felt very disconnected. And now me being a psychologist, you know, I understand in my mind. Uh, you know, I. I even question things even later in my life, you know, but I'm saying before, I was like, maybe it's because uh, of, of stress, maybe it's because of that, I'm seeing things. I mean, you're talking about a little kid already going, trying to diagnose himself <laughs> with stuff. Uh, after I reached, you know, like, uh, what was I, like uh, 12 years old and I was learning, I started seeing spirits of even uh, rabbis and spirits of other things, and they were teaching me things, uh, you know, to, like every time I would learn uh, from my bar mitzvah, uh, every time I tried to pull away, they would tell me, just study, learn to read, learn to do, because, you know, I'm from Israel originally, but I never really, uh, you know, I knew how to speak Hebrew, but I never really learned how to read it, you know, because it wasn't, I, I was, you know, even uh, I started going to yeshiva also and stuff, but I never really paid attention. I was always a bad kid. It wasn't really bad. It was just, I didn't connect with the world, never really paid attention to anything. So obviously I read in English, I spoke in English, but Hebrew, I couldn't read. And I just did the prayers based on memorization. And I started to learn to read, and they would not let me, these spirits would actually torture me, that I would not be able to leave this alone. And I knew they were great spirits, because they're good spirits, obviously, some, something that wants to do that. And I'm going to go into, into the reason why uh, this is happening in the, other, the later portion of this uh, program right here. But uh, So I started to learn and stuff like that, and then I started to see... I do not belong with humanity. That's what I started telling myself. And I know a lot of you guys were writing that to me, and that's why it really hit the spot. So what did I do? I used to sleep in graveyards. Uh, against my mom's wish, nobody knew. I just, psh, right there, boom. Uh, and uh, I connected with the dead much more than I connected with anyone. I just did not care anymore. And then a spirit came up to me and actually spoke to me. And they would, you know, all of them are, they're not selfish. They're just like, they really want to communicate with the outside world because they want to let their loved ones know. Even some of them, their loved ones are dead, but they think that they're, they're still there. Uh, you know, so they want you to uh, communicate, you know. And this is the thing, when you open the door of communication, it's one of the worst things you can do, especially if you have nobody, like I had nobody to talk to, even though I didn't know my grandma and everybody were clairvoyant. I had no idea, uh, no idea at all. And uh, in my yeshivas, I mean, I was called a heretic. I was called all kinds of names by rabbis. And the day I knew that I wasn't crazy is when I, uh, when I uh, had a friend of mine actually, you know, sketch what I see. Uh, he was a good, you know, he knew how to draw. So I wanted him to sketch. And I thought, oh, you know, like I see on TV, those cops, they know how to do it. I was little. So, you know, I had him uh, draw what I was seeing. And then suddenly I'm telling him, dude, I'm seeing... You know, somebody here, it's a, it's a lady, she's hovering around you, she's uh, kissing you, she's uh, telling me that she loves you, and her name is uh, Rachel or whatever, and 
sorry. Uh, and uh, her name is Rachel or whatever her name was. Uh, I don't even remember that. But then he started telling me that's my aunt. And I said, is your aunt alive? And he goes, no, my aunt is dead. And I said, I just saw your aunt. I'm telling you that's her. She's right here with you. And that's when he told his parents, and I spoke with his parents. His parents called me a freak. They said I was lying. And then when I described how she looked like, they freaked. And that was the end of that. And they they believed it afterwards. Because nobody, you know, we're trained since we're small. Oh, don't believe in ghosts. Oh, there's no monsters under your bed. And they throw it under so much of uh, myths and stuff. But anyways, that's what was going on. My life was very confusing. So then I said, okay, I know that these spirits exist. Then when I went to yeshiva... Uh, the rabbi started, you know, uh, talking and he was uh, speaking about, and this is so crazy because I don't believe that rabbis should be, uh, you know, in that yeshiva should have been talking about things about, let's say, the Kabbalah when none of the kids there are freaking young. You know, I was like, what, 14 years old. I mean, uh, yeah, it's after the bar mitzvah, but I don't think Kabbalah should be taught to kids, uh, especially, I mean, I argue the validity of it to begin with, but the whole thing about it is... Until you know Torah, until you get the, the foundations, then you should learn that. Otherwise, you're going to be lost. And I had debates with him because he would talk to me about reincarnation and things like that. And I would tell him he's full of crap. I mean, I believe in reincarnation. I'll get to that too in the later uh, segment of this uh, program. But the thing is, what he was saying is, is that everybody has that chance and everybody blah, blah, blah. And the way he was talking, it's not for a 14-year-old, uh, you know, 14-year-olds uh, to, to learn. And I would debate with him, and he would argue with me, and debate with him, and he would argue with me. And then I saw his mother. <laughs> okay, I didn't even know his mom was dead. I didn't know anything about him. All I know is he was my teacher, right? That's it, rabbi, teacher. I told him, I said, there's a woman standing right near you, and she's even telling you that you're incorrect. <laughs> and he told me, where's, the, where's there a woman? I'm crazy, I'm this. When I described his mother, he didn't say you were right. He didn't say anything. He just called me a heretic. He couldn't believe what I did. And he sent me downstairs to the principal, who was a rabbi too, who told me, Leor, it's okay. He is The, the principal thought I was nuts. So he was just like, you know, the, the theory. Uh, just agree with the boy and just nod your head and just say, you're right, you're right. He needs help. And that's it. I mean, he di I didn't see anything on him. If I saw his mother, he would have believed me, but I didn't. So I saw, you know... And I was always, I felt like an outcast all the time, no matter how much. Then I went to high school. Uh, I was pulling away and it's like God has tried to push me back in. So I was pulling away from people and people were pulling me in. I was one of the most popular kids in my high school. How did that happen when I'm antisocial? It's God wanted to bless me to make sure I'm not in, you know, over my head. And because, I mean, think about it. When you open your mind to these things... You want to help them because you have a good heart, but at the same time, and they, they don't want to take advantage. It's just, they kind of do, but it's like all of them at once, once they know you're the telephone to the next world, you're going to be bombarded with billions and billions of spirits trying to talk to you. And you have to hear one word out of all of them, just one word, and let it stick out, and that's the word you want to go for, and then you try to help them. It becomes a form of idolatry. Why? Because it comes between your relationship with you and God. You have to focus in this world. So this is the problem, guys. So I'm... Um, I went through a lot of hell. In fact, just till recently, and then I started fighting back against, uh, you know, doing exorcisms and, and doing that from homes and stuff like that. And we're going to get into that as well, Deepu Kim. We're going to talk about that as well. <clears throat> but uh, it was a nightmare. It was a living hell. I started coming out with different ways to not see them. Medit uh, you know, not meditation, that, that I learned later on. I started chewing on my on my cheeks uh, anything to cause me pain relieved me from seeing these things or hearing them uh, I couldn't I wanted it to end I wanted it to stop I looked at it as a curse till like recently you know I, even though I loved the fact that I was helping people out doing exorcisms making their houses better doing my own version of Schlumbeit and it was working great for me and I loved uh, loved to have that power but it wasn't I wasn't able I mean think about it since I was small I looked you know, everybody's thinking, oh, I mean, you know, go on playing G.I. Joes and stuff. And then when they grow to a certain age, oh, let's date. I dated a lot, but here's the thing. I look at humanity. Ever since I was little, I always called them my children. Even when I was five years old, I looked at my grandma like she's my daughter. You understand? Things weren't exactly in my mind correct. And I, the only way I can uh, 
kind of identify, uh, I kind of see that. I mean, even now I look at people as my, my children, but in a way it's like very few stand out. And I went on dates. I did everything you could ever imagine just to try to get me to be normal. Even girls I did not want to be with, uh, you know, they, they would come to me and I would just be like, whatever, let's do it, uh, you know, go. And I was trying to be something I'm not. I was trying to be what is defined in this world as normal. And the word normal is very subjective, just like the word demon is very subjective. I mean, what is demon to me? Demon to me means any spirit that causes harm to, to, to a living person. Uh, that's a demon to me. There's also spirits that cause harm to spirits. Well, not really. They're just running away, uh, running after each other or something like that. I never actually see them commit any harms. But there's, that's who I call demons. And, you know, it was a world of pain for me because it was mental anguish of unimaginable things. It was like, I just, I, I saw the truth, but I kind of wished for ignorance a little bit, you know? It's not a world for everybody. And I'm going to tell you, the fact that we got it, and I looked at it as a blessing because uh, God, you know, God did this to me. I, uh, you know, at first I thought I was being cursed and I was being that because everybody was frowning upon it. All the rabbis were telling me I'm a heretic. All these people were telling me I'm freaking crazy. And then when I would show them the truth, they would be like in shock, but they still wouldn't want to have anything to do with me because I was a freak. In high school, I became popular suddenly out of nowhere. Everybody wanted to be my friend. Everybody wanted to do this. And I, the more I pulled away, I even went to the graveyard. People followed me to the graveyard. This is horrible. This is not a, a world I want for my children. It's not a world that I would want from anybody. But if you were, I look at it as chosen by God to do that. I mean, think about it. Daniel uh, in Ketuvim, right? He had visions. Visions is a form of clairvoyance. Some people see spirits. Some people hear spirits. Uh, I happen to do, see them all. I even get visions. I get, but not uh, premonitions really. My visions are, you know, um, to be explained. Like you have to explain it. You have to put it together like a puzzle. But everybody has their own different versions of uh, clairvoyance. I happen to just uh, be blessed with all of them. I think because I just opened myself. I said, screw it. You know what? This is me. I'm not going to start. I'm not going to be. Because I realized I'm not, I don't want to hurt myself to make these things stop. So I meditate. But I don't communicate with them. They know I ignore them. They're here. They're here. They're everywhere. They're, they're in everyone's house. But I don't. I ignore them because I got to live my life. And I tell them this every night when I go to sleep. I read the Shema Israel And I say, I love you guys. My spiritual brothers and sisters. I love you. But I cannot do this because I got to focus on my life right now. And I hope you can understand and that's it. And I always meditate and everything. And there's still, I see them from time to time in the peripheral vision you're going to see. Also, I'm sure most people in their peripheral vision suddenly see a shadow going through like that. It's, uh, it's a spirit, no matter what you want to believe. It's a spirit. Uh, unless it has uh, electronic magnetic force uh, frequencies, like let's say from uh, you're near a microwave or near something, your brain's going to play tricks on you. But if there's no, uh, you know, any type of EMF over there, uh, you are seeing what you're you're seeing. Okay, and that's the thing. Uh, I'm very clairvoyant. I wake up sometimes and there's a spirit standing right in front of me to the point that I'm not paranoid anymore. I wake up, I'm like this. And I just get up and I just ignore it. And that's because they, they hope that you're going to be their communication to the next world. And, you know, I would love to help them all out. And I know they're hearing me even now. But, you know, you can't do that. And, guys, that's what I'm telling you. All you people that wrote uh, to me, uh, do not be ashamed of who you are. Do not be at all ashamed of who you are. Be very happy who you are. Be ex You know, there was a reason you were chosen for this. So don't plot, you know, plan your suicides. Don't look at it as you being a heretic because they're the heretics. Anybody that accuses you is Lashon Ara because they are nobody to judge you for a gift that you had. Now, if you, let's say, did a magic spell on yourself or were playing like, you know, contacting and conjuring the dead, yes, that's illegal. That's not allowed. You're not allowed to disturb the dead. But if they're there and you were born with seeing them, you're not conjuring anything. You are not committing a sin. In fact, you're doing a, a kind of a service, really. Especially when you start to do Shlom Bait, uh, a lot of the people, and I'm going to go into that, a lot of the people that have fights or have panic attacks that I have cured, I have a 100% cure rate to panic attacks. And everybody that had anxiety attacks, I have helped, and they're all out. And you could ask any one of them and document, you could look at my YouTube video, and you'll see people already writing that they're already... They're cured. They're cured. They write cured. It's not a disease, but people are writing that. It's because they know 
what is out there. Okay, there are spirits that are out there and they are contributing to a lot of anxiety, a lot of problems in this world. Now, why I'm going to talk about this. Now, a lot of uh, we're going to talk about it in the history after uh, this intro, but I just want to leave it at that. And now, you know what? We're going to go right now into the history. Uh, see you in about five. Hello, guys. Okay, so the history, huh? What's the history of this? See, today, a lot of religious groups, they look at it as a bad thing. Oh, spirits here. Oh, there's no such thing as spirits. Oh, when you're dead, you know, you go to heaven or hell and yada, 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 and that's it. Uh, they don't believe in uh, evil spirits. They don't believe in that. Well, I'm going to tell you guys something, okay? In Judaism, three years old, when you're, uh, for instance, my nephew, we're not cutting his hair off till he's three. The Jewish boy, we don't cut his hair off till he's three years old. If you ask people, a lot of religious people, they, they won't know. Say, it's a ritual. It's a minag. It's not a minag. It's not a ritual. It is, I mean, a ritual. It's not cultural. It is done for a reason. And a lot of people don't like to speak about it, and I'll get into that too right after this. Back in the day, okay, first off, Lilith was Adam's first wife. Okay, Lilith is Lilith. She was Adam's first wife. This woman... Uh, because, you know, read about her, Wikipedia, whatever, uh, just look it up. I don't like really talking about her because she uh, irks my nerves. <laughs> I don't like reading about uh, people, uh, you know, things that are evil. But I, I want you to discover it for yourself. The bottom line is God cursed her that every day her children will die. So uh, in Latin, they name them incubi, succubi, incubus, succubus, whatever. Uh, English, vampire. The, the meaning of vampire means night demon. But it's an, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an evil spirit. Now, what happened was, back in the day, when a baby was born, uh, they would put a talisman on the baby, uh, and afterwards, they would leave his hair long, and then they would cut it off after three. Now, why did that happen after three years old? Because these incubi would be sent to, let's say, a man, a grown man, have sex with you in the dreams, which happens. People who have wet dreams, you're having sex, believe it or not, with evil spirits. Now, they draw energy from your soul to, to, to sustain themselves. You can survive. Some people get sick, whatever, but you can survive. A child will die. So what happened was they tricked the demons, okay? Again, demon is a subjective term, but I call them demons because they, are, they cause harm. Tricked the demons into thinking the child was a girl, so the demon would not inflict that person. And yes, demons are that stupid. But anyway, demons are really that stupid. So really, really stupid. So the child would trick, you know, and then once they're three years old, they can sustain it. They cut their hair off. And that was the reason behind the long hair and cut of the three years and that. But nobody will tell you that. Nobody will tell you that story. They'll just be like, it's a rich, it's a cultural thing. It's a ritual, yada, yada, yada. That's what we do. That's not what it is, okay? The sages, you know, of, in Judaism... They wanted to protect the public, but they were wrong about some things. I mean, they're, they're human. They're not 100% correct about everything. They're human beings. They're not going to be, uh, you know, they're not God. There's, there's going to be mistakes. And what they believed was that if you, I mean, I'm thinking based on what they did. If you ignore the problem, you ignore the spirits and demons, and you don't mention them in, in, in the books, you don't talk about them, you don't do anything, What's going to happen is that ignorance is going to make you, you know, protect it from them. And th therefore, you'll just focus on Torah and that's it. Guys, let me tell you something. God wants you to protect yourself, right? The, the, the Dead Sea, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Red Sea, when God told a member of each tribe to jump into the water when it hit above here. That, remember, as I talked about all my videos, there's many messages behind that. But one of the messages is you can't wait for a miracle while sitting on your hands. You know, you just can't do that. You got to do and protecting yourself is part of it. And I believe that if we did know about the spiritual world, we would understand how important tshuva is. We would understand how important doing great deeds in this world is. But the fact that people have no fear of God anymore, no fear of the Lord's judgment, because they think, oh, you know, we're dead, we all go to heaven. The Christians believe, you believe in Jesus, you're, no matter what, what, you're going to be in heaven. The Jews believe, oh, you're going to be in hell or heaven. I mean, you know. There is no such thing as hell, and I'm going to get to that too. Oh boy, Bible has been wrong about so many things. But uh, uh, again, not written by God, there's going to be a lot of contradictions there. But uh, that's uh, pretty much what it is. Well, hell is very subjective too, the word hell. It's just not lake of fire, that's what I'm talking about. So, the history of it is basically that. So, I mean, you know, people always believed 
even when you got sick, they said it was something to do. You know, today people call it Ainara. There's no such thing as the evil eye. Nobody could put that kind of stuff on you. If you believe in God and you have Emunah in God, these things cannot affect you. But at the same time, it can affect your moods. And I'm going to get into that in the portion of the types of spirits. Now, you believe in God. Believing in God is also being aware of what's your surroundings, okay? You have to be aware of your surroundings. Being a Talmud Chacham, for instance, right? What were you... It's not like today where they lock themselves up in, in study uh, Torah. They were people that lived Torah, understood almost every language of all nations. They studied every language. They went up... They understood every culture. They understood what was... They were like... They were like a real version of Wikipedia who were moving around. That was the Chachamim. You understand? Not today where they sit around and lock themselves up in their little man-made caves and let the whole world, you know, abandon the world. That's not, that's not, not uh, doing tikkun olam at all. That's just studying and not doing what you study, which is like the worst thing because you have knowledge and you're not doing it. It's bad. But the thing is, we have people that do. Like the Chabad, they go out and they do and stuff like that. And that's why I respect the, uh, the Chabad over all sects that I've seen, that I've seen. That's important to say that. Now, um, you know, so that's pretty much the history behind uh, the spiritual world. Everybody always blamed. You got sick, you did, you know, you got this. Jews also use this. A lot of Israelites used white sage. They used sages, uh, all kinds of incense. Because why? The smoke actually attaches to the spirit and what? Weakens it. When I do exorcisms, I use these things. I do it on, on Dibukim, which I'm going to go into that uh, shortly after, in which I'm urging all you people that are clairvoyant to do great deeds by doing this, to do Shlom Bait, because you're going to see how it works and you're not going to believe it and you will know that you have a purpose in this world. And that, okay, it feels like a curse, but in reality... What is this world about? Doing everything to honor God. So if you were given this, that's why I came to a conclusion. I'm like, I'm not fighting this anymore. I'm going to fight and ignore them and whatever, but I'm not fighting who I am anymore. I'm not going to try to be something I'm not because God made me this way for a purpose. We all have a purpose. Each and every one of us. Doesn't make us greater than one another. Even the Mashiach, when he comes, he has a purpose. Doesn't make him greater than any of us. We each have a purpose for a greater whole. Okay, God made prophets, God made seers, God made all kinds of things. Daniel was a seer. He was a person who had, he, uh, you know, he wasn't, uh, uh, you know, insane or anything, but he was seeing, you know, he had visions. People have different things and God gives everybody gifts. Some people are good in math. Some people are, are horrible in math, but good in other things and, and building things. Everybody has a gift and together as one, we build for a greater whole. And that is what is really important to understand people. Okay. And I... I don't, you know, like this, that I came up with this. It just happened to work out that it's during Halloween. I am not doing this as a Halloween thing, okay? I hope, uh, you know, I'm going to re be releasing it, but I hope you guys understand that it's not a Halloween thing at all. It just happens to be that I just happen to do it now, and I'm releasing it. Uh, uh, hopefully, you know, maybe I'll wait till after <laughs> Halloween, because I don't want, oh, no, you know what? I want to release this as soon as possible. I got too many people uh, telling me they want to kill themselves. So uh, that's, uh, you know, you're going to see that me talking to myself right now. So, okay, now we're going to go uh, to, uh, first off, I, I got to say this. I want you guys to take all men's words as suggestion, but only the word of God. Okay, the word of God is to be taken as law, in fact. So take my words how you want it. You either believe, you don't believe, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me, but to me, it, I need to give this information to people who sent me emails and to the rest of the world who are interested. Those who are not if you feel that you're not haunted with spirits or everything, why even go there? Don't bother with it. And please do not conjure spirits. Even when you do Ouija boards, okay, and all these stupid things that people do, and you know, as uh, playing games. When you open up a world, okay, when you say, I want to communicate, the words, I want to communicate, every spirit that's in your house is going to want to communicate with you. And by the way, you're also drawing spirits from outside. That means even evil spirits might come to you. Okay, and those evil spirits are going to be there and they're going to stick to you like white on rice. And that's why I'm telling you, be careful what you open your doors to. So if you're not clairvoyant or even if you are, do not open doors that you cannot handle. Because I'm telling you, those especially that are not clairvoyant will go crazy. I saw this guy who was studying Book of, Ma uh, Book of Shadows. He was doing every type of warlock stuff and crap like that witches do. All kinds of things and pagan stuff just to wake the dead and co communicate. And I knew that he wasn't faking. I thought he was doing it for attention originally. And then when I saw that he was seeing what I saw, I said, oh boy, 
The guy, I never seen him anymore. He went crazy. He was on Xanax. He was on Prozac. He was on every medication you could ever think of because his brain was not meant to handle that tribulation. You understand that? He, he opened his wor that world that he didn't need to. Uh, that's what it is. I say to people who are not clairvoyant, know it's there. Use this. Read the Shema Yisrael. Do the Psalm 91 and you'll kick whatever the hell is out of your house. And I'm going to explain that in the uh, uh, exorcism and cleansing part of this uh, thing. So basically, that's the history of it, okay? So now we're going to go into reincarnation and also the afterlife. I'm going to talk about that, okay? Okay, guys, so reincarnation and afterlife. Let's talk about the afterlife. A lot of people believe when you die, you go to heaven or hell. You go through judgment and then you go through heaven or hell. Very, well, you know, very wrong. <laughs> You're kind of wrong here, okay? When a person dies, he goes through what's called judgment number one. I know the Bible always says that's final judgment. That, no, it's not. It's judgment number one. Now, this is why it's very important to do deeds, and I'm going to go into that right now. When you go through a judgment, and first off, what happens is, I'm going to walk you through it. You're dead. A spirit, like a shadow, comes and bring, takes you. Okay, he kind of like guides you and teleports you. Uh, his name is Samael. Okay, but you know, uh, you guys could call him the angel of death, whatever you want to do. He has other special specialities also. He actually could calm, calm people down, could dull pains and a bunch of other things. But he guides you. Then you get, you, if you're evil, uh, from what, th these are stories that spirits uh, talk about. Okay, so again, with uh, salt. <laughs> but uh, I have actually have seen the teleport, what I'm talking about, but you don't see pretty much beyond that. So you go and you see good, like you, you see your grandparents, you see, uh, if you're evil, that is, you see your grandparents, you see everybody all happy and whatever, and then they start to cry. And then you get sucked out of that. You get teleported out of that world and into judgment. Now, let's say you were a tzaddik, okay? Like a person with almost no flaws at all, blah, 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 whatever. Let's say you only made three sins. Your whole life, three sins. You figure, hey, it's nothing. Every sin that is brought in judgment, because first you meet, you, you walk actually, you go forward, and you see this angel he is so freaking tall. He is infinitely tall, okay? So you can't even see his head, <laughs> okay? Uh, because when I had my, uh, th this is actually a true story, what I'm about to tell you. When I had my coma, that, I believe I did see him. When I was in my coma at eight years old, I did a backflip and fell in the back of my head. Uh, really screwed up my uh, <laughs> my skull uh, in Machane Israel Day Camp. Yeah, guys. <laughs> uh, shout out to anybody that went to that camp. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's what happened. So I saw this this creature. Uh, he, he's an angel. And, you know, the spirits then filled me in on it. So, uh, you know, again, grain of salt. Take it with a truckload of salt. This angel is the, is so big that I couldn't see his, his, his head. It was so tall and huge and it was black. But sometimes it appeared white. Maybe it was the frying of my brains. But, you know, the spirits are saying he, he was all black. Every part of his body was, but you knew it was a, a living thing. You knew it was an angel. And every part of his body is covered in eyes. Eyes that are open and eyes that are closed. Even eyes within eyes, which is reincarnation. And I'm going to explain to you why. The, this eye, each eye represents a human being. And when this eye closes, that human being is dead. Okay, the eye that represents you is dead because it represents every human being. And I believe the little eyes that I saw in the eye was, uh, this I believe, this is commentary here. Okay, those are the reincarnations. Now, when I spoke to uh, spirits, the, uh, you know, what, what they used to tell me was that not everyone gets reincarnated. So again, people that speak, uh, that talk in the Kabbalah, these are all commentary. Uh, I went into that, you know, obviously Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai did not write that. It was written by a, by a man and, you know, by other people. And I went into that on my Facebook and please debate with me if you want. But there is some truth to it. And the truth is that there is reincarnation, but not everybody is given a right to reincarnation. There's people that do not get reincarnated. Now, how is reincarnation, right? There's levels behind it. So first, let me just get into that. So after, after the, uh, Azriel is his name, the uh, angel of eyes, the angel of eyes. And then what happens is you go into judgment. 
And now I call him the sight of God because each eye saw all your entire life. And now people say when you go into judgment, they tell you, they, they, they show you a whole video of your entire life. Yeah, guess what? It's like instant. They just touch you and you see your whole life, everything that you did, every sin, every, every bad stuff. Then when they start to accuse you, let's say you spoke Lashon Ara about somebody. Okay, which is common, very common. Everybody does it. I did it. Everyone does it when you're a kid, when you're, you know, you're doing that. You start to hear words like echoes. Your whole world is shaking, everything. It's like, it's worse than hell. And every sin, even if you did three, every sin that you do is so hard on you that you feel like you took your clothes off in the middle of the street in a populated area. That's the shame you feel. But even that is not even, I don't think human beings can grasp the concept of what true shame is when you're there. It's a shame that you pray to God that there was a lake of fire, that you could just end this. And it shakes. And now when you're dead, your body falls. But there's an important reason why there's burial. Because there's soul splitting. A piece of your soul stays in the body because you, you need to be back here. And I'm going to explain. And I'm going to explain that. So there's a part in your body here and a part, other part that's going through the first judge. It's the first judgment. I'm going to get to that. And then afterwards, you're sent back down. Okay, so then you're judged. You feel so much shame that you cannot believe at all the iniquities that you have committed. You cannot believe at anything. You are going to be inflicted with so much shame to the point that you're going to want to die. Your whole world will shake and you hear the voices of those that you have victimized. Okay, even if let's say one day you smacked the kid in the head and ran away and then, you know, yeah, little kids are, you see these things and you feel the incredible amount of shame. You hear how that person felt and you have to understand when your soul gets out of your body, you don't have that Yetzer Hara that's telling you, oh, it's normal. You, you are 100% pure. It's a pure uh, soul. It's, it, it, it takes in, it's like being without skin. Every little thing can, can, you know, even the air can burn you. That's how it feels like. It's the worst feeling in the world. It, and every eye is on you. You're like everybody, all the judge, judges are looking at you. Everybody, all the angels, you know, angel spirits, every entity there is staring at you. And you know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God of Abraham, blessed be his name forever, is seeing your judgment and knows your judgment and you truly know how you have let him down. And it, whether you're evil, whether you're not, it is the worst feeling you can ever imagine. Now, people say, how come, you know, people that cremate themselves, oh, they're going to, they're, they're, you know, uh, Mashiach is not going to free them. That's not true. There's a reason why people came to that conclusion. Remember, in every myth, there is a little uh, truth. This is why Jews, we always bury, Okay. And it's not because uh, Mashiach won't free you, but you'll have a higher probability chance that Mashiach won't free you. Now, why am I saying that? After you're being judged for whatever sin you have done, if you are chosen to be reincarnated to complete a mission, let's say, people die early at age 20. People die as a fetus. But some of them, their reincarnation lasts instants. For example, and I love how cute humanity is because they don't see something wrong uh, you know, in certain videos. A lot of you guys that have the stomach to see today ISIS, uh, how they're beheading people. There's people that scream all the way to their deaths. And then there are people that they're talking and then suddenly they're putting a knife to the guy's throat and the guy has no reaction on his face whatsoever, almost like as if he was dead. And he's like this. And as they're cutting, he's silent. Just a little squeak, squeak and cuts. But his face, if you really pay attention, a lot of them, you know, a few of them that you see on video, if you could stomach it, it's almost like there's somebody else. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, there's somebody else. And I'm going to explain to you what happens. When God knows that they're going to die, Samael pulls their soul out. And right away. And there's another soul that goes inside. That soul, I believe, is a reincarnation for, for a couple seconds. He's going through a torture for something he has done, for an iniquity, and wanted to even it out. And what happened is, he gets inside and completes that. For instance, a fetus, I believe, this is what I believe, not a fetus, uh, you know, a person uh, who's a baby and then he, he dies in the stomach, in the womb, or at one years old, or 20. He does also finishes his mission, but he also, let's say if he's in between, I believe, 
he does deeds, like makes the parents happy by giving them a deed to have a child, and so on and so forth. And that, that's the thing that people need to understand. God, God has a reason for everything. But the world is not, it's not simple heaven or hell. Hell doesn't exist. There's no lake of fire. The hell is on this earth uh, that you feel bad. Like, for instance, uh, when you're, you know, the, so those are the reincarnations. But I went to this lady who, uh, you know, we did a Shabbaton in her house. Uh, she was uh, a woman who was just, who just converted. Uh, and, uh, you know, she went through a hell of a conversion. Oh, boy. From one rabbi to the other to the next. I kept telling her, keep going, keep going. That's a tribulation. She finally found someone great. She had a Shabbaton. She was all, you know, in his house. And then she came and tried to do the first Shabbat in her house and wanted, uh, asked me if I can do Kiddush. So I went over her house. I did Kiddush. I did the whole thing. And when she was lighting the candles, something beautiful uh, happened and sad at the same time. I see a spirit starting, starting to cry uh, near her. And I said, why are you crying? She said, I have all the opportunities in the world to do this and I didn't light the candles for the Sabbath. And what's funny is people can argue and talk about the Sabbath candles. Oh, you shouldn't burn it. Oh, because if you burn it, you know, Shabbat, you're not allowed to do it. There's a lot of debates and it makes sense. But the thing is, when you honor God, it doesn't matter what the heck you do, you're honoring God, okay? Chatzot and stuff like that was in, in Shabbat back in the day in the times of the temple. Today we don't do music. But I'm saying it happened, okay? So... Anything to honor God is a good thing on the Sabbath. I mean, I'm against using electronics and stuff like that. Uh, I don't go on the internet, but that's also because I want to calm my head and focus. I mean, I always focus on God, so I really don't. It's just to calm my head portion and do it to honor God. I mean, you know, that's the way it is. It's the Lord's day. But like things to honor God, like lighting Negot uh, Shabbat, you, you got to, you know, the candles to the Sabbath, you got to do it. But now I'm going to explain to you what's, what, what's, the, what's the thing here, the dili, the whole dili, here, the whole skinny. When you're dead, you're sent back into this world. Now, if you're cremated, you have nothing to go back to to try to do deeds. Believe it or not, spirits can do deeds. God gives them a chance because now all the spirits, good and bad, are waiting for what is called final judgment. When the Mashiach comes, there is no heaven or hell. The soul will be turned to nothingness. At all. Nothingness. Uh, you can read that even in Echeskel. And Ezekiel. But, you know, I needed to ask, and I asked spirits, and, you know, and they verified it. Uh, and that's basically what it is. Uh, you know, this is what it is. It, you see things differently, but the thing is, let me explain to you something. When you're doing, and this is why it's so important to do mitzvot, and so important to do tshuvot, tshuva here, to do deeds and repent, uh, repent here. Because when you're sent back, you have to understand, they are not clairvoyant. They cannot do this. Some spirits can actually move through energies and it moves a little like this lightly. But again, to me, to do a good deed, you can walk up to a guy, a homeless person, give him a dollar, help an old lady up. It's so easy. One, two, three, you could do a deed. One, two, three. And, you know, dedicate it to God. So easy to do deeds in this world. And you guys don't know how much you're taking advantage of it till you're dead. The dead people, the dead people, I don't like saying that. The spirits, they're not corporeal. So they cannot do it as fast. They put like a hundred times the effort and sometimes thousands and millions and billions times the effort to do just one deed. But they know of the final judgment. Now a person who committed so much iniquities know he's evil. So he's left in this world to what? Test humanity. Ever heard the Yetzer Hara, Yetzer Hatov, right? Yetzer Hara, a lot of the times you hear these demonic idiots talking in your head, but you don't know. For instance, you see a woman struggling in the street they give you, they say, don't do it. Now, Satan is the tester. He presents that test to you. The evil, the Yetzirah, which comes from Azazel, and I'll explain that in later, uh, speaks to you and tells you not to do it. But at the same time, you have other spirits who weigh you down, make you feel all bad. And Azazel, you know, the Yetzirah gives you ways to justify it. Oh, yeah, I'm tired. Oh, somebody else will help her. Let me just go there, you know, back home. That's the problem. See, the end game, you end up all the same. You live when you live, you die when you die. It's not going to make a difference. You're going to end up in your house no matter what, whether you save that woman or not. But you can either lift her up, make a mitzvah, go to your house, or just ignore her and go to your house. Nothing's going to happen until judgment. But then they make all kinds of strives to do deeds when you're in the spiritual world. So you give dreams to people to communicate. You warn them of things that are to come. You do all kinds of things to try to do deeds, you know? For instance, those that were training me and, and, and when I wanted to get out and play basketball with my friends and they were telling me, no, keep reading, keep learning to read, keep learning to read, keep learning to write. 
read the read it, read it, read it. They were doing their deeds. And you know how they say, oh, I have to do a deed, some of these fairy tales, I gotta earn my wings. <laughs> it's not totally untrue. Remember, every myth has a little bit of truth behind it. All souls, no matter what, are gonna be coming back down here. Every soul, every single one, even Sadiqim, even sages, even anyone, they're gonna be coming down here to repent and uh, to do all the deeds they possibly can, even if it takes them millenniums to do it. They're going to try to do it before the final judgment arrives. And not every soul becomes reincarnated. It's very important that people understand that. There's so many people, oh, up to three times, up to this, uh, you know, as humans, and then they, they're becoming as something else. You are not God to make that, uh, that declaration. You are not God to make that comment. You are commenting based on commentary. And the funny part is none of you guys are clairvoyant, so you can't see anything, yet you comment. Where do you get this information from? Did you speak to the dead? Absolutely not. You're listening to some guy who wrote a book and claimed Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai wrote it. But, you know, that's the thing. Out of every myth comes a little bit of truth. But you should not believe any work that's made by man as law and fact. Only God's word as law and fact. Everything else made by man... Use it as suggestion, but don't take it so literal as Torah. You can't do that. In fact, Akiva even okayed it, which is wrong. But Akiva also okayed Bar Kochba's being the Mashiach. So, I mean, you see, everybody makes flaws and paid for it with his life, of course. Uh, false prophet. It, it's not, you know, I, people don't like calling it, but that's what God said. If somebody prophesies falsely, he's considered a false prophet. And he paid for it with his life. And his last words were Shema Yisrael, cut to pieces all over the floor. And that's what happened. And that is the sad part about it, but he's human. Every human being makes mistakes. They are not God. You understand? And that's why things that, you know, you cannot say something is part of Torah when it has a lot of contradictions. If something has no contradictions, then you know it's legit. But is the, like I said, is the Kabbalah good? Yeah, I mean, you read it, it gives you information. But I compared it. I mean, you guys can debate with me. It's on my Facebook. Uh, you know, nobody debated because they knew I was right. I, they had nothing to talk about because I compared it. I even found tablets of the Sfirot and the Babylonian God's Sfirot was exactly alike. in the tablets, it's in fact exactly the shape. So the thing is, the people need to understand. I mean, I read the Kabbalah, even though I shouldn't have. I, I come from a family who still reads it. You know, and then they still are very, very, very pro-Kabbalah. And I debate with them over and over again of the, of the contradictions in it. And, you know, some of it they want to hear, some of it they don't. And they understand it's written by a human being. But, you know, we have to take it as that because it was decided that way. I don't do things based on decision of humanity. I am a man of God. I do things what God says. What is God's word is what you have to do. And the halachot that are made by the sages, the sages wouldn't have even approved of this. No sage in the world back at Chazal would have not approved of that. Not at all. Don't. Please do not tell me that they would have. Now, of course, they, you know, you can argue the Kabbalah was written way before back, you know, in Abraham's times. That's not the same thing. The Kabbalah that we're studying today is not the same thing. Might have came a little bit from it, then that's great. But again, not the same thing. And all Jews today, no matter how much they believe they're religious, were Hellenized. Do, do to Galut. That is part of the Galut, people. Okay, everyone is Hellenized. That's the way it is. And we got to open our minds to what is the compass? What is the truth? What is the true north? What is the true south? Very simple. Torah. Torah, 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 Torah. That is written by God. Tanakh is written by God. You follow the Tanakh. You follow the Torah, the, the explanation of Moshe Rabbeinu that explained the laws and everything. You follow the sages of Chazal. You know, even though they're, you know, not perfect, they came up with, with laws that you can actually go back and you'll say, hmm, makes sense, doesn't it? So some of the law, you know, all these laws, they have always you can go back and you can see what's right and wrong. And then you can, you know, and you make your decision for yourself, but then you approach it and you walk forward. And you see what is the true north, and you see what is the true south, and you see what is the true whatever. But if you start bringing different books into play and taking it as literal as Torah, you're going to get lost because you don't know what is truth and what is not. And this is the importance that you have to understand the spiritual world. The spiritual world is not black, uh, you know, black on white. It's not that simple. It's not shades of gray. There's different shades of gray. And everybody has you know god decides for everybody not everyone gets reincarnated some of them do some of them don't in fact i will tell you most of them do not only a few do okay so you got to understand that before you make that kind of uh assumption and 
that is the reason why deeds are so important in this world because in the next world it's so hard to do the deeds when you await final judgment you know the clock is ticking now you guys have no you know when you're dead you have no tied to time that's what people think like the angels and god but the truth of the matter is you are very much tied to time because you know exactly when the end of the world is coming you know exactly when you know final judgment's going to come and you fear for your life that your soul is going to go poof you understand so what do you do you do all the deeds you can. Oh my God, let me do it. Oh my God, oh my God. And that's how you're doing it. Okay, and that's what these uh, spirits do. You know, that's that's what it's about. So, you go, you come back down, you're trying to do deeds. And if if you make it, you make it. You don't, you don't. God is the judge. You can't, I can't say a person who killed this guy is going gonna, is gonna to die. You know what I mean? It's much more complicated than that. And you know, that's that's the whole thing. God makes decisions all the time. And that that's what it is. And Always the emunah and kavanah has to be strong because if you don't have uh, a belief and meaning behind your belief, you're going to be a lost person all the time. Okay, and that's the, this is, it doesn't go just for the Israelites. I'm talking to everyone, all nations here. You know, my videos are for all of them. And you can believe what your Bibles say, but I'm telling you, you can ask any person who's clairvoyant, okay? You can ask any human being who's clairvoyant and he will tell you the exact thing I'm saying. Of course, your priests are going to tell you what? They're going to say, oh, you spoke to the devil. <laughs> First off, guys, something you, uh, you got to understand, and we're going to go into that in the, uh, in the later portion uh, uh, about Azazel and who Satan is and how he hid behind his name and every other name that was given to you. Uh, so we're going to go into that now. Now we're going to go into the types of hauntings or uh you know spirits that are out there okay see ya okay guys so now we're going to talk about the types of spirits okay so first off there's a spirit that let's say they come to your house they're dead right they, they died and the spirit is in the house because they were in this house before you uh some of them know you're there you know and they're they're observing you they're some of them will try to help you some of them will try to depress you. They will depress you in ways you can not even imagine, make your life uh, feel bad. And I'm going to explain that in the Dibukim portion of that, the exorcism portion. Uh, and that's, that's that. And then you have others that don't even know you're alive. They don't even know who you are. They don't even see you. You ever see a spirit, uh, those who are clairvoyant, and I'm talking to you guys, who walk through walls. I want you under, to understand uh, some of the ones that know that you're there would walk through walls too because they know they can. But the truth of the matter is they walk actually through walls, those that don't know you're there, for a reason. In their life, that was not a wall. It was a hallway and it was an opening. So they're living a life. Now why? Some of them that I've been, when I did exorcisms, they had people who committed suicide. So when a person commits suicide, I don't even think he goes through judgment. What I think is, yeah, I've I, I, I never seen... Uh, I never seen Samael actually take their soul away because uh, what the only thing I saw is their soul constantly living the same, the same sequence over and over again. So the entire day they wake up, they're depressed. You see them sitting in a corner. You wait about an hour, you see them hung. Let's say if they hung themselves, they live their life up to the hanging moment. Also, uh, there's uh, spirits that. I don't think Samael takes either, which are spirits who have unresolved deaths. For instance, some guy got shot, uh, you know, to death. He doesn't know who the killer is. Uh, I went to Wolf's Pond in Staten Island. People were compl complaining that they were hearing noises of children crying at 12 o'clock, you know, in midnight, which is, I thought was just attention starved. I went over there and I actually seen children uh, walking. And, and this is, you know, about what, like seven years ago. And, you know, they're starting to walk and they're looking for their killer. So I think it also is for people who are unresolved. Uh, I think they need to resolve their deaths and be at peace before they are ready for judgment. If that makes sense at all. It's just a little, a little, uh, a little weird. I don't know. But you see, again, everything has a purpose and I'm not going to have the answers to every little thing. But uh, they live over and over again in a circle till they realize what happened on that day. Who is the killer? Who is that? And I told the, the ones in Staten Island, I said, your killer is dead. Your murderer, this is a long, long time ago. There's no more anything. Some of them believed me. Some of them didn't. They said, he's here. And they would just go and look. Uh, you know, they would just uh, ignore me and just move, uh, move along. Some of them don't even know you're there. So you'd walk and you'd talk to the kids. And the kids are not even looking at you. You know, some of the kids there. And, and this is the thing. It's like they, they're in their own world. They're in a world of torture. 
And the, uh, you know, and some of them, uh, the spirit that I spoke to, she said some of them left. So some of them, I guess, made peace and just left to the next world. <coughs> but they're constantly living in a circle. It, it's so, it's so difficult to understand what the afterlife is. But anyway, so that's what, uh, that's what happened. So they walk in, and live in a circle and live in a circle and that. Now, when the spirit is here, let's say it had a horrible life. It's crying. Okay, you see it crying. Oh, my God. And they don't know you're even there. You start to feel depressed for no reason at all. Have you guys ever, those who are not clairvoyant, have you guys ever been in, in, in your house and suddenly have the urge to cry? Have you had the, the, a feeling of heaviness or a feeling of, uh, you know, like something's wrong or you're, oh my God, or did you ever wake up at three or four o'clock in the morning like, uh, like what the hell's going on? Those are the, more, the moments of spirits. They wake you up. Uh, maybe they had a fire in the house, so they wake you up. Uh, some of them want your attention. They wake you up. Uh, all kinds of things that they would do to you. And, uh, you know, that's the whole the whole thing about it is some of them know you're there, some of them don't. Those that don't are, the I would say, the most dangerous to you because they are experiencing, uh, I mean, because the other ones you could just kick out. You know, and these you could too, but you have to kind of talk to them. For example, the evil spirits, you can really just kick them out using this. But those that don't know you're there are living in like another type of plane. It's hard to explain, but it cannot be easily done. What you would have to do is you would have to use this and say prayers, you know, the Shema and the and Psalm 91, but you will see that they basically just kind of get your attention. You really need a clairvoyant person to be there because then you they can talk to them. And like I try to talk and they don't listen until suddenly they just happen to, you know, like it would take a long time. You'd have to go there like weeks, you know, and, and try to do it over and over again until they get your attention. Then you can explain to them, your murderer is dead. You need to rest in peace. There's nothing there. I know you're, you're in trouble. I know you're in this. I know you're in that. And also some of the things they're allowed to tell you, some of the things they're not. So they all have rules too it's like sometimes they would talk and i would just hear them but not, no words coming out of their lips and i try to read their lips and i wouldn't be able to it's like it's weird it's like your mind god makes it to the point that is not you know that is not being able to understand and uh that's what you guys you know you guys gotta you guys gotta realize that was actually uh one of my my good sisters here stephanie <laughs> uh calling she's uh, about to do uh conversion very soon i'm very happy for her uh, a zionist about to be i'm i'm very happy a, a torah living zionist which is the most important thing in the world uh but let me go back to this uh so you know the whole thing about it oh it's calling yeah okay uh the whole thing about it is to help them and you know see them and sometimes you know you don't want to do that you're you feel that when you feel that heaviness inside you that's when you know something is wrong. You see, so they give off emotions. Spirits give off emotions. Spirits give off all kinds of stuff. Now, evil spirits, what do they do? They haunt you. How do they haunt you? They don't go boo, whatever. They go, they would move things in your house, uh, you know, very lightly. Because again, they, they, they've probably lived a long time and they know all these powers and stuff and whatever. They'd wake you in the middle of the night. They'd give you uh, dreams. They would uh, haunt you. They would uh, do things to get your attention. Uh, every little thing you could ever imagine to get your attention. Because again, they, they misery loves company and they want you to be destroyed too. And they would give you all kinds of bad things. I mean, I'm going to tell you uh, in the debook uh, portion of that more in, in detail about that. But uh, that's uh, basically the whole uh, shebang behind there, you know. Uh, they, there's even some that just observe you. It's weird. They just wait there. They're watchers. And they watch you and they see you and everything. I mean, I've seen... Uh, Samael and people say you die when you see him. I told my friend your cat's about to die. My cat I saw so but I'm saying I told my friend your, your cat's about to die. I just saw Samael touch him <laughs> and you could ask him. He's on my Facebook too and uh, you know I'll hook you up. I don't give names and last names here but if you know me you'll ask him <laughs> or I can even do it for you and I'll tell you. I saw him touch him a week later the cat was dead. I didn't even know it was Samael because it's a shadow and there's also uh, other shadow uh, spirits, which is weird. So it's like there's you can't really identify them, I guess, until you're dead, and then you you know what's what and what's uh, not. But uh, I've seen these things, and they give you emotions. They give you all kinds of things, and those are the types. And then there's ones that know you're there and love you, and they try to protect you. So they give you dreams to protect you. But they again, rules of the plane, they can't tell you anything. So they give you clues in the dreams, like a mouse, 
uh, running away from you. That means you have, or, or you're being shot, means you're being inflicted. Somebody is causing you harm. And then if you still live through it, that means you're going to get through it. Or maybe it's, a, it's to show you that don't let people walk all over you. You know what I mean? Those are the things, you know, like they say, when you lose your teeth in a dream, what is that? So I, I took, you know, I'm a psychologist. Uh, what happens is when you tooth, uh, lose all your teeth in, in, in your dream, it also means it has uh, where you always want to talk, but you always, you know, you can't get a word in edgewise. You're always very uh, passive aggressive and you, you need to speak up. And that's, you see, these kind of dreams, they're not just made by your subconscious. It's made by spirits. Spirits are trying to talk to you, do their deeds or do your their inflictions. Uh, depends what kind of uh, spirits they are, you know, and that's what what they do. Okay, now we're going to go into the a little bit more freaky side, which is called Dibukim, exorcisms. Okay, guys, Dibuk, right? Uh, exorcisms. Uh, in my history, I go into people's homes, and lately I've been realizing it's more constant. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe in uh, spiritual realms and none of that. Uh, one of them, for example, uh, I do also relationship counseling. Uh, and when I go, I'm really outside the box. And I told them, I said, uh, I went to their house, didn't say anything, spoke to them. And uh, they were in love with each other. And I know them too, they're personally. So very, very much in love, very much in love. And then suddenly, cold as ice, each one wanted to kill one another. Like, I don't know if really kill, uh, they, they claim it was, but I think it was just, you know, they just hated one another. And I sat down with them in their home. First thing I did when I entered, ugh, I felt this incredible, like you ever walk into a room and the tension, you feel it in the air. It's so hard, you could cut it with a knife. That's how I felt. And I said, something is wrong. Now, remember, negativity also attracts negative energy. So whether it came before or after, it's the chicken and the egg thing, you know. You don't know what came first. But uh, I was there and I saw, you know, evil spirits. You know, spirits that were causing them anguish. Uh, usually they leave immediately. So obviously what I did, I have a whole trunk case here of infrared, lasers, and you name it. All kinds of stuff. And I left also security cams and you name it and you whatever. And they know when you're doing that, obviously. So they didn't come out. <laughs> they don't come out and play. But uh, I told her, I said, listen, I'm going to do a cleanse here. She goes, oh, people are going to think I smoke weed. I'm like, this isn't weed. Nobody's going to think that. Let me do this thing in your house. She goes, oh, this is stupid. It's heretic. It's all that. I said, no, it's not. Jews used to do that. They used to burn stuff because incense weaken the evil spirits and kick them the hell out. And I, I was doing that in her home. I read, uh, I told her, even though she's a Gentile, I told, uh, she, you know, now is returning. She's half uh, uh, Jew, half not. And now she is actually uh, returning to be a convert. I told her, I said, uh, I want you to say the Shema Israel. It's a dedication to say God is the God, you know, the God of Abraham is the, the, the one God, you know, the God is all, uh, is our God. And uh, they did the Shema Israel and they did the Psalm 91. And then I walked around with her burning this. And, uh, oh, sorry, I walked around uh, burning this and everything was, uh, you know, everything was good. Suddenly they fell in love. They're back together again. No placebo effect. The husband didn't know. I mean, the boyfriend didn't know nothing. He didn't know anything. He didn't know uh, what was going on. Suddenly, uh, she comes back to me and tells me I got into a fight again. I said, she goes, I don't like him. I want to get out. I, I told her. Did you still do the smudging when I told you to do it? Because you had a, high, a very high infestation, so I make a recommendation of six months, once a month, uh, I mean twice a month to do it every two weeks so you spread them out even, and then, you know, for six months, and then to maintain every three months you do it. Uh, or until you feel like crap. So, uh, yeah, so she was doing that, and uh, uh, she told me she didn't do it. So I told her, well, there's your problem. And she goes, Leo, I really don't believe in that. I'm like, listen, ask yourself a question. When that happened, did you guys get together? She goes, yeah. I go, then why not just give it another shot? Anyway, so she did it. And now she, she did it for that. They couldn't be more in love. How did that happen? Shlumbait, ladies and gentlemen. Very easy. Most of the things like panic attacks, anxiety attacks and stuff, all the people that I have cured, and I've cured many, okay, can't even count them. And you could ask around about me. They know that, that I am Captain Anti-Anxiety Attack. Because I know what causes problems in this world. It's not easy. It's not just it comes to your mind and that's it. They're a tribulation. They're a test to you. They were ordained to do this. 
But at the same time, it's your responsibility to recognize the problem and to defeat it. Azazel, okay, that son of a, you know, uh, yeah, that piece of crap, okay, is found in the Torah as well. But of course, nobody wants to talk about it. He hides behind many names. For example, the Christians call him Satan. Uh, in Hebrew, they say Maase Satan. It's not Maase Satan. Again, the Hellenized Jews. It's not Maase Satan when something, when you're holding a knife and you might cut yourself. Satan doesn't do evil things. He's the tester. He is the angel of tests. But everybody in Judaism and everything, even in the Siddur, you read about worrying, you know, in, in the Tfilah, when you read She uh, uh, me, 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 me uh, Satan, or, you know, uh, from, from Gehenom, which is hell. There's no such thing as hell. There's no such thing. Uh, Satan is not evil. He is the tester. Okay, he tests. That's his job. And with every test, he gives you opportunity to do great deeds. Okay, you, people always look at it as a bad thing. He gives me tests. You have opportunities to do great deeds. Without these tests, you got nothing. You understand? You're just doing it because you're, you're being told to. There's no kavanah, there's no meaning. When you go above and beyond and you go against what your head is telling you, don't do it, don't do it, and then you have a, a part of you that tells you do it because it's the, what honors God and you do it, it has more meaning that way. It shows sacrifice. It shows you're doing something. Okay? And what happens is his essence is stuck in all of us. Okay? So he hid. You know, people say, oh, Satan's greatest weapon is that nobody knows he's alive. Everyone knows he is alive. Everyone knows the name Satan. Everyone knows that name. What they don't know is Azazel. They do not know what Azazel is. They have no idea who he is. Okay? They all uh, became ignorant, closed their minds to it. Azazel is very real. Okay? And he is extremely real. And he is a ball of energy. Okay? He's this energy. And this is the way it is. And, and I'm telling you people, he is very freaking real. And his essence is in every one of humanity. And that is your Yetzirah. You have to understand. Yetzirah is different. Uh, uh, Satan presents the tribulation in front of you. Azazel, who waits final judgment, that piece of crap, gives you those, do not do it. Do not do it. You know, here, his voice is very faint too. If you guys actually meditate, you'd actually hear his voice very faint. Very faint. And then suddenly, it becomes, even though it's faint, it becomes louder than anybody who can scream in your face. Because louder, not in the sense of sense, but it becomes louder because you listen to it. And it, it, it justifies it to you that it's the right thing to do. Like, you don't want to help this woman. Oh, my back hurts. I'll probably twist my back. I don't want to give a dollar to this homeless man because he'll spend it on drugs. <laughs> you understand? You're going to have all of these things when, it, when, when you're giving, uh, when you're supposed to give staka or help somebody. And evil cannot be defeated like that, okay? What needs to be, what you need to do with evil is you have to channel it, you have to understand it, and you have to make sure you don't follow it. Because you, the greatest weapon of Azazel is the fact that he hid behind so many names. The Christians call him Lucifer. Guys, really? Latin? You think the angels spoke Latin? Latin is a holy language, really? Okay, Lucifer, really? Lucifer was a mortal king. But again, he hid behind the name of Lucifer. He hid behind the name of Baal, which is now called Allah. You know, uh, w which the Muslims took on as Allah as their God. Well, they believe it's the God of Abraham, but in reality, it is not. The word Allah, if you guys look at all the root of Allah, it's Baal. Okay? Azazel is Baal. If you look at him, think about it. And every mosque, what is there? On every Quran, what is there? There's a moon. But they don't, I want them to understand this too. There's a moon and a star. Okay? Now remember, Muhammad took from all religions, right? So the star represents what, like the Christians believe, morning star, yada, 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 Lucifer. The, the moon, the god of war, Ares, from uh, the Greek mythology, he hid behind his name too, as I said. He hid behind the Baal, who, you know, fashioned weapons, taught people how to use weapons, taught people how to kill, which Azazel is also known for, especially in the book of Enoch, you will, uh, you will read this, Enoch, Enoch, really understood what he was saying. And the Kabbalah took a lot from the, the, the book of Enoch. And you can really compare them both at the same time. Yet Enoch was not taken as Torah, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so, the moon uh, represented the god of war. The moon represented Baal. Baal, if you look at all the statues of Baal, the, the, the tablets, Baal had a, a moon. He rep was represented by a moon and a star. And that was named Allah. And Muhammad knew also that, that, was, that Allah was a name that was of pagan, 
but he still took on that name based on cultural and took it on himself. The word Allah, that's what it is. So he hid behind the word Allah. He hid behind Lucifer. He hid behind Satan, who's the tester and has nothing to do with anything. He hid behind, oh yeah, yeah. He hid behind all of these things. And that is the thing that people don't know he exists. And that is the most saddest, saddest thing in the world. Because once you understand that he exists, you know how to channel that energy. You know when something evil is talking to you. Like for instance, when I see a homeless, one time I saw a homeless guy, I walked past him, I felt so guilty. I walked like at least six blocks down and because something kept telling me, you know, oh, you know, uh, I don't, you know, not to do it, not to do it. And I'm just walking about and doing my thing. <sighs> Suddenly, I feel this overwhelming guilt. And I said, you know what? This has got to be Azazel that's doing this to me. So I said, you know what? Screw you, Azazel. Poof. I returned back, gave him staka, and that was it. And I gave him twice as much because I felt even more guilty. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how complicated this world is. Okay, so what you need to do is focus on, on that. So I saw people who came up to me and I did, uh, you know, and then this woman, uh, she promised this man, uh, you know, when they were, uh, when he was alive, he, she said, I, I love you. I love you. Let's get married. They got married. They said that our marriage is forever. I will not marry anybody else. They made a deal with each other that they will not marry anyone else. Poor guy died from cancer. Very sad. Uh, and I, I don't know these people, so I don't know exactly his history, what happened, exactly how uh, I was just called based on a friend's uh, recommendation, so I went into that. Uh, she started, she came back home, and she was very depressed. Uh, she would, uh, her mother said she acted like she wasn't herself. Her boyfriend, because she dated, and, and that's why it happened. You make a neder, you know, and you don't do atarat nedarim, but also you make a neder, it's not good also. And she even had a dream of a snake biting her, which people interpret as... Uh, that, uh, that's what I do. I usually ask questions to the mom because the, the child uh, was very, very uh, different. Uh, she acted very uh, manly. It's not like uh, exorcism like in the movies. Oh, Satan, she speaks Latin. That's full of crap. Okay, that, that was just uh, the Christian world trying to get people like Emily Rose. The Christians uh, were losing people of, uh, to have faith in their religion. So they took a poor, innocent girl and made her retarded. I mean, she was uh, retarded, uh, which I say mentally, uh, you know, challenged. And they took her and they, they killed her. They murdered her by trying to tell her, you're haunted by demons, you're haunted by this, you're this, you're a demon, you're that. They destroyed her in, in hopes that they can... And that, that's the problem with religious people. The, the, the leaders only care for one thing, and that's power. They don't care about you, and they don't... They sure as hell don't... Uh, well, hell doesn't exist, but they sure do not give a rat's ass about God. They do not care about God. And you guys got to understand that. You each are judged yourself, so do not follow leaders. Follow what your mind says. If you find a person, for instance, a rabbi, you need to find one who lives Torah and understands Torah, who knows the, uh, the fear of judgment. If you fear God, you're not going to do evil sins. But if you don't fear God, and how do you know? Because you have to trust what you read. You need to have that before you go into other people. Have a basic understanding so then things make sense to you. Otherwise, people are just barking orders. Nothing makes sense anymore. Okay? So, what happened is she started, the first day I walked in, she was acting very depressed. Second day, she acted like somebody else. And then, this is the, the and, and you know, the next week I came after, I think it was the next week, the next two weeks, she started talking um, very weird. Like, in a, so you put your ear close, and I couldn't even hear, because, you know, I was like, oh, whatever. I took a tape recorder and started recording. And as I recorded, it was him. It was his voice. And, it, you know, when you start playing around, I know how to do with EVP. I, I, I specialize in this. So I specialize in that. And then what happened is we did, you know, I did what I did. And, and we did, you know, the exorcism to her. And it wasn't like, oh, oh, you know, those spinning heads and all that. I took uh, White Sage, started reading Shema Israel, and told her to repeat after me. I said, I want you to repeat this. I gave her some water. Okay, I took water and started, not holy water, <laughs> uh, water, started making her drink and I told her, I held her head and I looked at her eyes. I looked at her eyes and her eyes were like this, like really like that. And I looked at her eye, at the pupil of her eye and I said, just focus at my, the pupil of my eye. And you should do this to all you guys that are clairvoyant or even not, do this. Look at them right in the eyes, into the eyes and I say, focus on me, focus right in my pupil. Say this and you tell them to repeat. El Melech Ne'eman. Then cover their eyes and say, repeat, Shema, she's going to repeat it, Israel, 
Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. I don't like saying it because it's Bracha Levatala. And then you go, Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed, and you say it three times. Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. Okay? That's what it is. Slow it down. Okay? Uh, you guys can read it. You can find it in my, in my Facebook also. I have the Shema Israel. You guys could say it. Then have her read Psalm 91. You can read it yourself. But then you read it. But it, when you tell them to repeat after you with, the, with the Psalm 91, make sure you say it in Hebrew and make sure you say it in English because the person has to understand what they're saying. Even though the translation is a little muffled, they get the idea. And after that, I took a little smoke, started putting around her and everything, and the spirit just left. Okay, I didn't even see anything. Like I, I could once the spirit uh, does a debuk on you, once he's in you, you really can't see the 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 spirit. Really, you just see the aura on the person. Kind of is like a muffled color. Like some people are red when they're mad and angry. Some people are, you know, a little bit like washed out red when they're just a bit angry, a little bit stressed, which is most common in everybody. And then there's blue, which you just feel great. But sometimes you have this mixture of like orange and black and all kinds of crap. And you don't know what the hell is going on. You've never seen colors like that. I believe that is when a person has a debuk. Because everybody that I saw who had a debuk did have that kind, of, uh, that kind of look in their aura. So I basically did that and it went away. So that is what a debuk is. So Now, now what, uh, there's other kind of debukim. For example, you go outside. You're picking up a lot of negativity, a lot of stuff. You hug someone. Some of the spirits of the, of the bad can go. Now what Jews used to do back in the day, again... Every three months, they'd run this over their body. Uh, you know, I light it up and I tell uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu, I say, God of Abraham, bless be your name forever. You know, in Hebrew, I, I'd say everything. And I'd, I'd say, please bless this smoke that it's going to get me, you know, that's going to relieve me of all my, uh, all my uh, pains and everything. And that's it. And what I do is I also, after I do that, I say, may all the sins and everything, every repent you do, may all the sins go straight to Azazel. May all the sins go straight to Azazel. I even, I'm crazy a little bit. I, every time, every Friday uh, before Shabbat, what I do is I write in a parchment paper. I write uh, everybody I know, the names down. I have it, you know, I, I Xerox it all the time. And then what happens is I, I read the names and I say, God, please forgive, blah, 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 blah. And then afterwards I burn it into ashes and I say, Sort of like how Aaron used to do it. Of course, I, I'm not doing it with goats, but I do it myself. I just like to really tick him off. It, make, it, gives, it brings me great pleasure. But uh, that's pretty much it. Now, I fought demons, what I call demons, my entire life. Uh, even good spirits, I used to call them demons because they just would not leave me the hell alone. And uh, to those who are clairvoyant, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, if you want to explore this field, just be sure you do it wisely because once you listen to one, Millions of them are going to come to you. They're not going to give you peace. And I want you to have hope that there's going to, that it gets better. You know, and those that are not clairvoyant, please do not even try to be clairvoyant because you have no idea what you're walking into. Because once you open that door, that thing is not closing because the blockages, when you're born, you have uh, these kind of gifts. You could see everything. But as you grow older, you start having blockages in your brain that is protecting you. It's there for a reason. And some people, they're like us. Uh, the blockages are just not there. Now, you you know, a lot of you guys think it's like uh, you want attention. You're like, oh, I want to see, you know, evil spirits. So I want to feel like the big shot. You're not a big shot. That's the, one of the most horrible things you ever want in your life. I There were so many days I used to cry, and I'm very stone cold heart. I have a very, very stone cold heart. Only to the innocent I have a heart. And the problem is you're hearing innocent souls crying every day. You're hearing screams of people. You could see a person committing sins and you see him. Uh, I see uh, when he does a deed, uh, a little orb flies, uh, flies out of him, like a little orb flies right out of him. And I know that, that that's what it is. It's like hey, you're giving birth to angels. And then when you're doing something bad, you're giving birth to like uh, uh, red, like this red orb comes out. And I believe one is your, is your uh, uh, one, the evil one is your prosecutor and the other one is your lawyer. The good one's your lawyer. And I think every deed you do, you're giving birth to angels and to, to uh, you know, I get what I call demons. I, I don't know what to tell you. And I see it, and it used to drive me so mad that I used to cry every day on my knees to God, because I pray on my knees. And I say, please, God, let this go away. And every time in my head I heard, there's a reason, there's a reason, there's a reason. And I kept trying to control it through pain. I tr and then I, I started learning, getting more into meditation. I'm a martial artist ever since I was a kid, you know. 
So I started getting more into meditation, started meditating. And I was reading uh, Shemona Esrei, which is one of my favorite prayers. And as I'm reading it, you know, with tefillin and everything I do, you know, the morning prayers I read three times a day, obviously. But, you know, in my mind, I pray every every single second of my life. Even right now, this is a form of, of uh, you know, Kedusha. Everything that you do for, to help humanity is to help, you know, the Lord, God, and dedicate to Him. So I would look there and I would see them staring here. Good spirits, evil spirits, and they don't touch me. They don't talk to me. They just stand there like this. Stand there. Some of them cr started crying. Some of them like very silently, like I can't hear them. All of these things started happening. And I realized, my God, this is so important. I mean, I always did deeds. I never, you know, burned any bridges. I'm very, very straightforward. When I tell the truth, I cut people. People say my, my words are sharp as nails. Uh, I've been told that my, my, my tongue cuts people, whatever. <laughs> I didn't know I was that good, but hey, why not? I'll take it. But uh, yeah, uh, the thing is, I'm very truthful with people, and I'm brutally, 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 brutally honest. And sometimes, uh, you know, people don't like that, and sometimes people do. And that's that's your your call on it. But the thing is, it's I started realizing how important it is to do a deed in this world, not just because of the shame, and because uh, you know the self-made hell that you're gonna make for yourself. Not just because I see how hard it is for the spirits uh, to make deeds, although that is a big one. But the idea that you are disappointing the Creator. Screw it. Like, if there was even a lake of fire, and God told me I forgive you for your sins, I am the type of person that feels so guilty now if I do sins, that I would jump into the lake of fire whether God said I'm forgiven or not, because I do not deserve Him. You know, I do not deserve to be in His presence. And I always tell God, even though I always hear voices in my head telling me everything is good, everything is good. Yeah, it's a gatov. You know, they talk to you. It's God. It's your soul. You know, your soul talks to you. And you're doing fine. You're doing fine. You hear, don't worry. Everybody makes mistakes. Just keep doing it. Do tshuva when you do bad things. Do this. You hear the voice of God. Some people ignore it. Some people hear it. To me, I always say, God, even though you tell me you forgive me, on Yom Kippur, I don't do it for forgiveness. I do it as a dedication to God. He doesn't need it, but I do it. I say, God, even if you forgive me, if I don't feel that I'm doing something good for you, even if you tell me I am doing something good, if I don't feel I'm doing something good for you, then I don't feel that I deserve anything. You understand? This world, I'm not doing it for heaven. Even though in the Torah, everybody says, oh, you'll have salvation, yada, 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 whatever. I don't do it for heaven. God saw me fit to be in this world. Oh man, are you kidding me? I want to show my father absolute dedication. Absolute. And I'm not, people ask me, Leor, why aren't you a rabbi? You always give us speeches. You always this, you always that. I've been told billions of times, be a rabbi, be a rabbi. Even rabbis told me be a rabbi. I cannot be a rabbi. I cannot be any religious figure, but for a reason. There's a reason behind it. It's because people of religion, they're, they have muzzles uh, they're held down by chains and I don't blame them because if the, you know they have responsibility to the community I say they should have responsibility to everybody but let's say you had to help someone right let's say a rabbi want to help, wants to help someone that person is condemned by everyone me I'm the type of person that will help that person anyway other rabbis might not want to why because then the head of the rabbis would say oh my god he helped this person uh, you know, this isn't good. This person's a sinner. We know it's, it's let's say, a missionary or whatever. Uh, you know, we don't want to give him a second chance. And, and uh, this rabbi is going to actually take him. Oh, this guy must be an idiot. This guy must be... I mean, look how many people are talking against the Chabad. For God's sakes. Uh, rabbi Lobavitch, one of the biggest rabbis here in America, ever to walk America. The, the guy that did so many freaking deeds in his life. Absolute... Oh my God, my Rabbi Meir Kahana, uh, cherished him so much. He loved him so much. He used to talk about him all, uh, uh, when, when, when people would ask him about the Chabad. And the Chabad was very much respected because they do tikkun olam. They go out there and they perfect the imperfections. They help people. They go into dangerous areas. They died uh, trying to have people putting tefillin. They went to dangerous areas in, in Indonesia and stuff and they, they, they got killed. Uh, they don't care because it's all, they care about loving people and bringing them back to bring them peace and to make them understand why they're doing deeds and all that good stuff. But there's others that don't want to do that. 
and they judge and they do Lashon Hara and they do all kinds of evil iniquities. But what they don't understand is when you're going to go and you're going to be judged, you think you're up here right now. You have no idea what's going to happen to you. To me, everybody is down here. I'm in the ground. For me, I don't want to be up here. I want to be on the floor. And I believe every human being on earth is on the floor, whether they want to put themselves on pedestals or not, is irrelevant. It doesn't matter to me. To me, I see them on the floor. I see them as my children. They're on the floor with me. We're all crawling. And from the ground is where I learn, is where I am humble. When I rise and I get up and I, and I do and I work, I honor God. I don't do it for heaven. I don't do it for this non-existing hell. I do it for God and His most precious creation, humanity. And because of that, every word that comes out of my mouth is truth. Because, especially, especially when I'm doing these videos, you know, it's truth. Because I live with the fear of judgment. Okay, if I say something fake to you, I'm not lying to just you. I'm lying to the millions of masses that are watching this. Let me get this. Hey, hello? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you right back. I'm going to call you right, right back. Okay, goodbye. That's uh, Stephanie, a person who's converting, who found her way. She went from Christianity to Islam and now is going to Judaism. You know, she, she didn't convert to Islam. She just wanted to see what it was about. And then now is going to Judaism because she found truth. Obviously, in the roots is where you find the truth. And uh, I like that. Again, I'm not a missionary. Judaism, we're not missionaries, but we give the truth. We speak truth. Person wants to follow it, they follow it. You notice we don't pressure. In fact, it's so hard to be an Orthodox Jew. Some of them don't even accept anybody, which is ridiculous. But, you know, it is what it is. But that's what I'm trying to tell you people. That is what life after death is, okay? Life after death. That is exactly what it is. It is complicated. And those who are not clairvoyant, do not touch this. Do not go near it. Do not open it. You want attention? Go tell your mommy and daddy you, you know, get into fights. <laughs> I mean, I'm not telling you do that. But I'm saying, you know, tell your mommy and daddy you're flying or something. Get attention anywhere you want. It doesn't make a difference. But do not open these doors because everything you can undo, everything, you cannot close the doors once you open them. I promise you, you will be psychotic. You will be in, 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 a, in a crazy, crazy house. I'm telling you, you're going to be nuts. You're going to be completely psychotic. Okay? And suicidal. Now, those of you that are clairvoyant, and those of you, let's say, that opened that, uh, that world up, please contact me. Let us talk. Let me ease your hearts. Let me ease your mind. Okay, let me tell you that through Torah, everything could be calm. But through knowledge, you got to have knowledge of what's out there, okay? And you got to understand the rules. Because if you don't understand the rules, you help one out because you have a good heart and I love you for it. But billions of them are going to plague you and they're going to inflict you. You're not going to be able to live in this world. I feel right now like I have one foot in the spiritual, one foot in the physical. That's how I live. I became used to it because it was since I was little. But a person to get it all in one shot... I, mean, I don't even like it. I'm telling you, I don't like it. I like it now because I'm saying, because I'm doing things, uh, you know, I want to dedicate everything to God. So I do exorcisms, I do shlom bayit, I do all kinds of stuff that I could possibly do to save people. But the the feelings, I, I'm not liking it. It's not something I like. I wanted to end it. You understand? And, and, and this is me being clairvoyant, okay? And I'm born with it. My nephew, thank God, I mean, he's born with it. And if he ever asks questions, I'm going to help him. Uh, I'm going to always be there for him because I know I always needed somebody to talk to. I couldn't talk to anybody till one day I had an anxiety attack and, <laughs> you know, and uh, I didn't know what the, what the heck was going on. And then I learned to cure myself and I realized something was up. I remember I had a dream. Uh, and again, spirits gave me a dream of uh, I was like in feudal Japan and, you know, in the water. I was looking for my Magen David, the Star of David that I have uh, that I always wear around my neck. Uh, you know, see right here. I always wear it. It's from Israel. And I lost it. And, and what happened was, uh, what happened was I couldn't find it ever. And I always felt bad about it. And then suddenly, you know, uh, I had a dream. It was in the water. And I had the anxiety attack. I thought it was dying from a heart attack. I took uh, the Magen David out of the water. And then I looked and I just put it to my heart. I woke up. I looked, I must have searched under the, the bed a billion times, looked under my bed and found it. It was right there. Put it right on the chain, had it and felt great. <laughs> it's all 
these spirits, they, they do, they're doing deeds. But you see, it's very hard for them. They can't light Nerot Shabbat. So all you women, I want you to light candles, Nerot Shabbat, okay, on the Sabbath. All you men, uh, men, I want you to put on tefillin. I want you to, you know, and people say, you know, the karaim, my brothers who are karaim, my brothers and sisters who are karaim, also Jews, but they, they don't take the oral uh, traditions and laws. You know, you have a brit milah, where'd you get that law? But I'm not going to go into that. I mean, that's what I used to tell you guys, but, you know, you know, and then you realized it. Some of you, some of you still didn't want to listen, but you guys are awesome. I love you anyway. You're a part of us. We're, you're part of Am Yisrael, and I don't want to cut you away. I mean, if you listen to the Tanakh, who's to say that's a bad thing? This is God's words. You're, you did great. You're doing great. There's nothing. It's just a, a group of people that believe one way. That's it. And uh, the thing is, what I'm going to say is, I want you to understand that when we put on tefillin, you could say it was, you know, just a saying to wear it on our, you know, hearts and like that. And it's just a saying and all that. Circumcise the heart is also just a saying and, you know, what did it mean? Circumcise the penis. Uh, and uh, there's explanations that need to be, but one thing's for sure. If you were to dedicate something to God, okay, let's say you're putting on straps around your, your hands, right? And you're doing that. Are we wrong for it? I mean, think about it. Even I'm not talking about Allah. I'm not talking about anything. Let's say you want to pray to God, and when you pray to God, I pray on my knees. You guys pray on your knees too. Uh, you see, and I, I was raised the Orthodox way, but I always pray on my knees as Moshe Rabbeinu did. And you see, that's why I'm not saying you're totally wrong. You guys are legit in some things, and some things you're not. Some things we are, some things we're not. And, uh, you know, we're, we're humans. We're, we're flawed. You know, that we have flaws in us. It's, we're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Only God. So that's the thing you got to understand. We wear it because it's a dedication. I wear it mainly, not just because of Allah, but it's because I want to lock myself and immerse myself in a world. But that's just me. You know, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But some of my Karaim brothers are now starting to put in, and I really love that, that they did it. I, I was teaching it to the best of my ability. And I love the different ways, uh, you know, I was teaching you because some people do it European way. I do it, I change it every day when I do it. I do it one time Ashkenazi, one time Svaradi, one time Bavli. I do it so different. I, I love, my favorite is the one that goes here and here. <laughs> so it's like covers the fingers, but it's over here. You're going to see it in one of my pictures that I'm doing it. Some rabbis were asking me, what is that? And I told them, that's the, the ancient ways that they used to do it back in the day in ba Babel. They used to do it that way. So I do it like this. I do it like that. And I go through every change not because i feel it's wrong it's because i love god and i want to dedicate and there's no real right or wrong way to do it it's you're doing it you're doing it it's, a, it's part of the kavanah process part of the meaning process you know you do things from your heart that's why i encourage people to write your own psalms also because god wants to hear your words uh, it's good to recite i read from the sidur even though there's some things i disagree like genom like satan and stuff but you know, and the Sidur I read because it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that was written by sages who lived and knew what they were, to, you know, had knowledge of what they were talking about, obviously. And, uh, you know, that's what it is. And I, I was raised on that too. But I, uh, as you can see, I'm way, way different. My entire family, they never outcast me. But I was literally the black sheep of the family. And then they started coming forward and saying, we are like that too. We're clairvoyant. We see things. We do things. But do, Lior, don't tell anybody. Do not speak about this. <laughs> Everybody tells me, do not speak about this. Who do you have to fear? When God is with you, what on earth do you have to fear? You're telling the truth. If somebody can't handle it, get the hell out of my kitchen. I don't want to even look at you. That's the way it is. You have to understand that if a person was given this, okay, they were given it for a reason. All right, so my brothers and sisters, do not feel ostracized. Be truthful who you are and be damn proud of who you are. And stick to your story all the time. This is who you are. Do not change. Trust me, I try to change. There is no changing yourself. Okay? I'm learning to ignore them because it's just the way it is. I got nothing here, actually. I'm just I'm just saying uh, I'm sure they're probably looking but not manifesting. But they understand. They know the rules. My rule is I need to live this world. And when I need their help, I'll ask for it. And they'll have it. And if they want to give me dreams, hallelujah, give me dreams. But when I'm functioning in this world... I need to be in this world. I need to do my deeds. And if they respect me, I respect them. What I do is all the time when I get dreams, I don't take them lightly. In fact, I, I bite like this also. I made it like, because, you know, I used to do that to the pain to calm the, so I don't see spirits. But I do that all the time when I wake up. 
So I know even in my dreams I do it. So then I know when it's a dream or not. You understand? Once I know it's a dream, that's it. And I analyze every dream. There is no such thing as a dream that's nothing. There's always a message in that dream. And I, I always analyze it. And that's my promise to them. I'll analyze the dream and know and do my best to see what it is. And therefore, they can communicate with me through dreams. But there's always a plane and a boundary. If you cross that boundary, I'm not listening to you. And it's that that's the way you got to understand. Because they didn't listen to anybody in their time either. Or maybe they did. Who knows who you run into. But the thing is, my life is here. I got to focus on this life. And we all do for Am Israel. We're doing deeds for a greater all. They should be happy. Okay, so that's that. So, guys, I love you all. Um, you know, and I wish you to have peace and no mental anguish. And if you have any problems whatsoever, I beg you to please contact me. Let us talk. And I promise you, you are not crazy. You are, I, I mean, I don't like using the word special. Because we're all special in our own little way. Each one is special in something. You're special in this, okay? Somebody's special in math. Somebody's special in building things. I, I'm in, you know, I could build, I could be in, I, I used to teach engineers, okay? Like, I would talk with engineers. I know how to build helicopters. I know how to build stuff. I know how to do, like, aero shit. You know, all kinds of stuff. I built computers. I build stuff. I can do these things. I know what I'm doing. I mean, if you look at my videos, I even made a toy, uh was a DJI Phantom into like a real freaking drone. <laughs> so everybody is special in their own things, okay? And you see how I'm talking about it? I want you to talk about it. Just like you, a person says, I know how to build things like I just did. I want you to say, hey, I can see spirits. And once it becomes very common, people will learn to accept it and not to be stupid and think that you're heretic. They're heretic because they committed Lashon Ara, which is completely the evil tongue, which is completely frowned upon by God. You were given that gift for a reason. Just like they were given a gift. A gift of uh, math. A gift of whatever. They were given their gifts. We were given ours. Okay, so let's contribute to the greater whole. Let's get together and let's do this. And to all you guys who are not, do not open yourself. Also, those who are clairvoyant, do not conjure things. Okay, do not say, Spirits, I want to talk to you. Come from everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. Because when you do that, you're opening a gateway to something that's evil. And you might not, you're not going to be able to get rid of it unless you do smudging. And believe me, some of them have a lot of talent that, okay, let me explain to you. Some spirits, let's say they just die. Let's say your grandparents just died. They want to communicate with you, tell you you're okay. They will find another spirit to do, to communicate through. Why? Because that other spirit knows the rules where this one is just learning it. You understand? So those are the kind of things. So you got to understand you don't want you have to be careful what you're doing at all times and always live your life fearing the lord's judgment when you fear the lord's judgment you will always be righteous when you don't fear and that that's the best way to lead your life if you don't fear the lord's judgment you will lie you will steal you will cheat you will kill you will rape you will do everything that is against god okay you don't need that do what God, do tshuva, do repent, every time repent, because when you're in the next world, you're not going to have the ability to do so, okay? <sighs> May the Lord God of Abraham bless be his name forever, bless each and every one of you, my clairvoyant brothers and sisters, and those that are not clairvoyant, uh, uh, who are my brothers and sisters. May they have peace in their lives, may they understand of the afterlife so they can in, so they can understand their full function in this life that they may they have many 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 opportunities many many opportunities to do great deeds and may they all be in the table when we all sit together on one big shabbaton in salvation when the time comes in the final judgment amen i love you guys each and every one of you contact me uh, like comment subscribe uh, let me know what you guys think. I love each and every one of you. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.